text-to-speech and enumeration in Espanol. This is a different beast that we're dealing with. This is in an invisible beast. It is an insidious beast. This is not going to be a short deployment. This is not going to be that you go out there for a few days, we work hard and we go home. You are living a moment in history. This is going to be one of those moments they're going to write about and they're going to talk about for generations. This is a moment that is going to change this nation. This is a, na a moment that forges character, forges people, changes people, make them stronger, make them weaker. But this is a moment that will change character. And 10 years from now, you'll be talking about today to your children or your grandchildren, and you will shed a tear because you will remember the lives lost. And you'll remember the faces, and you'll remember the names, and you'll remember how hard we worked, and that we still lost loved ones. And you'll shed a tear, and you should, because it will be sad. But you will also be proud. You'll be proud of what you did. Ashamed of yourself. Fuck you. Who died and made you God? My name's Dudley Dawson. They call me Booger. Edgar Poe Wong. They call me Snotty. Truly hot kalugi, one must not retrieve the phlegm from the throat, but from the soul. someone's asymptomatic so they're not sick there's nothing wrong with them they don't even have a, a scratchy throat but they're in food prep 
they prepare people's food. And they sniff a little bit of pepper and they sneeze anyway all over the food. That could be a problem. All of a sudden you have 20 or 30 new cases, they're totally untraceable. Nobody knows even where they originated because they don't know that that person was sick. Imagine they work in an old folks home. Imagine it's a nurse. They work in hospice or something. You could have a real shit hits the fan sort of scenario where all of a sudden dozens or hundreds of other people are, are you know, dying. Uh, you could have a super spreader scenario from a person who's asymptomatic situationally because they're not shedding the disease in the normal way, but they are still capable of shedding it through sweat. That's been confirmed, which means that they can touch a doorknob, you touch the doorknob and then your face and you're potentially infected. That's number one. Number two, just because a person's not actively coughing or sneezing doesn't mean that some environmental situation can't cause that to happen. They have an allergic reaction. They work in construction. They inhale some sawdust or something. Um, they go by a construction site and they get hit in the face by a cloud of dust and they cough a little bit uh, and then they get on the bus. Uh, they <laughs> touching the, the bus door with their hand that they just coughed into. That could be a problem. You could end up with a lot of spreading from that. Hundred confirmed cases. Canada reached that date on March the 11th. Since then, the cases have surged past 1,000, 2,000 towards 3,000. Then the curve is bending upwards. Japan has done a better job than most countries of flattening the curve, attributed by some to a mask-wearing, obedient population. Other countries have been at this much longer. Canada has a fraction of the number of cases of China, which is over 80,000. South Korea managed to bend the curve down with a massive testing program to below 10,000. Italy didn't get started soon enough. Same thing for Spain, and maybe most worrying of all is the United States. All of these are arcing upwards, which suggests that cases are doubling more quickly. The goal for Canada, then, is to get Canadians to stay home and bend that curve downward over these next critical weeks. Let's look at some of the wasteful government departments this bill is going towards. A whopping $30 billion will go to the Department of Education for an education stabilization fund. $10 billion will go to the Federal Aviation Administration. $250 million will go to the IRS, as if they don't steal enough of our money every year anyway. $400 million will go to election security grants. $200 million will go to the FCC. $275 million will go to the Federal Buildings Fund. The Department of Homeland Security will get $178 million. The TSA will get $100 million, even though they're probably the most useless agency in the federal government. The Department of Labor will receive $345 million. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration will get $425 million. The Department of State will get $324 million. And the Social Security Administration will receive $300 million. $99.5 million will go to the Department of Energy. $60 million will go to NASA. $12.5 million will go to the Department of the Interior. $1 billion will go to the Defense Production Act purchases. $34 million will go to the National Forest System. Perhaps the most damning thing about this bill is that in the House of Representatives, the very people who wrote this bill voted to give themselves a $25 million raise. That's more than $57,000 per U.S. representative compared to your measly $1,200 check. They'll also be giving $850 million to state and local law enforcement, even though state and local law enforcement agencies are refusing to enforce the law during this crisis. Right here in the state of Ohio, Cincinnati police warned that their department will no longer send officers to respond to assaults with no injuries, breaking and entering, criminal property damage, loss or stolen property, and menacing and phone harassment. Meanwhile, states such as New York, Tennessee, New Jersey, California, and Ohio have all released hundreds of prisoners due to the spread of the c -word. So why in the world do we need to give global law enforcement nearly a billion dollars if they're not going to do their job during this crisis? And if you thought the auto bailouts of 2008 were bad, this stimulus bill will give U.S. Airlines a $58 billion bailout. According to Axios.com, half of the $58 billion will cover 750,000 employees, which will come out to $38,000 per employee. All in all, this disastrous bill adds up to $2 trillion. You'll only see a small fraction of the stimulus unless the government deems that you make too much, and you, the taxpayer, will be left footing the rest of the bill. I understand why Trump signed this, because he doesn't want to look like he's doing nothing during one of the worst crises in our nation's history. But I am shocked and appalled that he and the rest of the GOP would go along with the Democrats in passing this bill. This was passed under the guise of stimulating the economy as the stock markets tank and unemployment numbers continue to grow. But this will only harm the economy and make things much worse. Where do you think this money is going to come from? Oh wait, your taxes. As November rolls around, it's important to remember that there's not just a presidential election coming up, but congressional races as well. If your representative supported this bill, you might want to think twice before casting a vote for them in your primaries. We are a debtor nation. We owe one point, I mean, now it's 1.9 trillion, okay? I've been saying 1.8, now it's one point, it's really kicked in. It's soon going to be 2.4 trillion dollars, okay? That's like, that's like a point that whether you believe in the great economists or not, that seems to be a point of no return. That's where we're greased on steroids, okay?
Trump had been saying during his campaign that 24 trillion is the point of no return and now he's pushing the US over his theoretical edge by signing the demo rat bill, where they reward themselves with a raise. His confusion over 2.4 versus 24, demonstrates that he cares about debt but does not understand the dynamics involved. Um. Naturally, uh, the libertarian platform is very clear that we support open borders, uh, and uh, and I certainly support that plank, and I certainly support open borders, and I would open all the borders up, and uh, we would make uh, make it work. We would well, welcome. Define open borders because people are not aware of what it means exactly. Uh, borders that would welcome uh, all immigrants and uh, anybody who wants to visit the country. Um, minimal uh, border control, minimal border agents. Certainly, no ICE. Uh, abolish ICE. Get rid of that mess, and uh, let the people come on into uh, into the country and welcome them and uh, help them settle. I've got to follow up on the open borders thing. I understand it's, uh, it's just, that is the prevailing position here. Right now, um, the nation's kind of going into a panic over the COVID-19 virus from China. Uh, there were three cases found in my home county, Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, one person visited Bucks County, Pennsylvania, so they shut down all the schools. It's insanity. But there's an absolute stampede right now as far as the public fear on this. How is it possible to reconcile open borders with public health on a crisis like this? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. What's wrong with these morons? Numero uno, they're all dumber than fuck. Numero dos, they don't understand that the USA passed its bio capacity of 200 million in 1967 and we have no more room for stupid immigrants to maintain a healthy environment. Numero tres, they're commie disinformation agents. Numero cuatro, they're just ignorant idiots repeating talking points. Numero cinco, they're controlled opposition whores working for other donors who want to spoil others' work who include liberty messages in their presentations. Numero says, they don't know jack shit about ecology or economics and they're just playing dumb games because they're just puppets. Numero siete. They haven't taken a troll quiz and watched all of the genius Ron Paul girls videos. Will you please stand up and put your hands on your hips with wrists upwards. Now, let's all just laugh. In terms of uh, the happy talk we've had on this front from the federal government, there is no sign that the Navy hospital ships that the president made such a big deal of, the comfort and the mercy, um, there's no sign that they'll be anywhere site helping out anywhere in the country for weeks yet. The president said when he announced that those ships would be put into action against the COVID-19 epidemic, he said one of those ships would be operational in New York Harbor by next week. It's nonsense. It will not be there next week. A few moments later. Two big words, ready, reserves. In the name of fighting a virus that thus far has killed less than 100 Americans. Declaring a pandemic emergency on Friday, President Trump now claims the power to quarantine individuals suspected of being infected by the virus and, as Politico writes, stop and seize any plane, train, or automobile to stymie the spread of contagious disease. Over what? A virus that has thus far killed just over 5,000 worldwide and less than 100 in the United States. A few moments later. But Hurt Ronnie repeats numbers he's been fed like the other cult followers he's learned from because as I've said many times in other genius videos, he's a dime a dozen Mises cult follower, he's definitely no libertarian visionary genius, like you get on this channel and troll because you are a stupid member of some other retarded cult and you're a moron. We will move heaven and earth to safeguard our great American citizens. We will continue to use every power, every authority, every single resource we've got to keep our people healthy, safe, secure, and to get this thing over with. We want to finish this war. We have to get back to work. We have to get, we have to open our country again. We have to open our country again. We don't want to be doing this for months and months and months we're going to open our country again this country wasn't meant for this few were <laughs>